Okay, I think it's time to solve the simplest PDE. We already solved the simplest ODE. Yeah. Now it's time to solve the simplest PDE, which is Laplace's equation in one dimension. So what's nice about one dimension is that all you can have is a segment. That's your domain in one dimension. So I won't lie about it. A PD becomes an OD. This is no longer a partial derivative. There's only one unknown. But we're still thinking of it as a reduced PDE. And whatever we learn from this will actually help us when we then solve more complicated PDEs. So we're thinking of this ODE as a PDE. And something is a little bit different. You were, we, the way we did it originally, when we were dealing with this very problem as an ODE, we were given two conditions at the beginning, the value and its derivative. Now we're, we're, the spirit of this question is PDE, because we're given boundary conditions, the value on the left and the value on the right. Yes. No, in two dimensions, it's a function of x and y. But when we said now we're going to go to three dimensions, it's a function of x, y, and z. And if we say now we're going down to one dimension, then it's just a function of x. I think we, if we just focus on this condition, we know all the equations that satisfy it. And again, you could say, I took calculus. I know that if the second derivative is 0, then the first derivative is a constant. Then the function itself is ax plus b. That's great. That's good enough. But again, I want the linear algebra way of thinking. Let's think about the, yes, of course, that's the calculus logic underneath it all. But what's the linear algebra structure? The linear algebra structure is that I'm looking at a linear operator here, and I'm being asked the question of its null space, and I know that there are two linearly independent functions in its null space, a constant and a linear function, 1 and x. And so my solution to it, I'm not going to say general solution, because PDs don't have a general solution. If there is one here, it's a, it's a big exception. Equals a linear combination of the elements of the null space, ax plus b, where it really stands for a times x. That's the ugliest b I've ever seen. But uh, ax plus b, where it stands for a times x plus b times 1. That's what's there. And so we have just satisfied the bulk condition, not a very pretty word, bulk. You can call it the interior condition, the differential condition. And now it's time to go back and satisfy the boundary condition. So the pattern is there. The pattern that we'll use for solving other systems, other more complicated PDs or more complicated domains, as long as they are linear, is by decomposition. So I use this decomposition, this linear combination, to capture all possible equations that satisfy the differential condition. And now I just have to adjust the coefficients of the linear combination to satisfy my boundary conditions. And it's not hard. You plug in 0, you get that b equals 3. And you plug in 1, and you get that a, I'm just going to write it in one line. This is too simple. That a, let me write the equations. Okay, and so we have our unique solution to this, to this problem. And that's very nice. And so it's 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3. Always not a bad idea to go back and make sure that it fits. It, does it satisfy the differential condition that Laplace equals 0? Yes. Is the value at 0, 3? Yes. Is the value at 1, 5? Yes. We have found our solution. What was nice to experience here? Number one, that the number of given conditions matched exactly how many we needed. We got as many conditions as we needed. So our intuition for why one condition here is enough is kind of right. Because one on a domain is kind of two on a closed domain. Because here, what we would normally think of as one condition, because it's one boundary, one prescription of the values, here breaks up into two conditions, because it's sort of the left side and the right side. So something like that kind of happens here. It kind of is two conditions, one on the left, one on the right. And this, you see how sometimes the simplest examples 
bring out the truth in its purest form. And that's what kind of happened here. That tells you why it's really one condition that's enough, even though it's a second ordinary differential equation. Because when it comes down to the, to the details, it will end up being just the right number, just what you're looking for. And so the solution looks like this. It starts at 2, and, excuse me, starts at 3 and goes to 5. Is that about right? No. That's a harmonic function, isn't it? Is it true that for this function, the value at any point equals exactly the average values on the circle? Of course, the circle now becomes just two points. It's the set of equidistant points from a given point. So now it just becomes two points. I drew them in the wrong place. I have to draw, this is my domain, and this is the circle, the unit circle, a one-dimensional unit circle. It's just two points. And is it true that the value here equals the average of these two values? Of course it is. That's what a straight line is. And it can only be a straight line, as you know from this. So harmonic functions in one dimension are straight lines and nothing else. That's the only way you can be the average of your values. In two dimensions, it becomes a whole lot more complicated. Just think of the soap filaments and the shapes that it can take. It's an approximately true solution except it's even more the average of its values if you took the actual Laplace solution to Laplace's equation. Okay, just like that we have solved our simplest PDE. Now let's solve Poisson's equation.